Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So we're out here in the field and I thought it was the perfect day to go ahead and get started parting out this truck. We're pulling the front axle out of this for the junkyard scout. So the best thing we can do is just go ahead and get after it. All right, so I think the best place to start parting this truck out will be getting the bed and the cab off. Now obviously the bed's gonna be the easiest one, so I'm gonna start with that. Crawl up under there, find the mounts and we'll get this bed off. All right, so here's a couple of the bed mounts. There's one, and over there's one. And you can tell this stuff is really rusty. It's probably gonna be a pain in the butt getting it off. I'll probably end up cutting most of these off. Check out this shock. I think that says Baja Rider maybe. That's pretty cool, the old Gabriel shocks, big beefy ones too. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and grab the cutoff wheel and just go ahead, try and snip one side of them nuts off. But right there's a couple more. I might, I don't know if I have to drop the gas tank or not to get this bed off. Doesn't look like it's gonna be a lot of fun though. do that four more times there's a couple mounts right here behind this bumper so i'm gonna go ahead and cut that bracket and that bracket right there off it'll just make it a little easier to get to the mountain bolts and i need this bumper out of my way anyways bolts cut out these two front ones wasn't there these two are kind of cut out these should have been the easiest ones but they ended up being like carriage bolts of course they're stripped out i tried cutting them out we'll see what happens maybe they'll just rip out i've got the tractor set up here i'm kind of doubting we'll get this thing on the first go but it's worth a shot so i'm gonna go ahead and set this down and see what happens
that didn't go too bad. But these two bolts back here, I don't know why, they're always the worst ones to get off when you're trying to pull a truck bed. You can see what I ended up doing here. I actually ended up cutting that nut in half and then I got this almost all the way out and this decided to hang up. So I tried cutting that and it looks like it just went ahead and slipped through anyways. But it gives you a little bit better view of like the frame back here. This big old huge gooseneck hitch they had back here. There's a better view of that old Gabriel shock. What's weird where the frames like bent out right there. Same on both sides. And all I can figure is that is factory. Looks kind of weird though, but just looks like clearance for the shocks there or something. That's got the bed off, which opens up a lot of room to work. The cab is probably gonna be just as much fun. You can look up there and see the body bushings. They're super squished and cracked. And like I said before, there's carpet in this. Somebody actually come and bought a bunch of parts out of it this morning. Gauge cluster, bezel, and the steering wheel. If you need any parts off of this, holler at me. But I'm gonna wait till a nice cool morning or evening when all the waspers go to sleep and the spiders ain't crawling around. I'm gonna try and rip all this carpet out. And then I can probably get that seat out too. See if that snake's still under there. And once I get all that out, it'll be a lot easier to get to these bushings. I'll probably pull the front clip off with the whole cab, just keep it as one unit, because I'd say that's how somebody's gonna wanna buy it. All right, so a few things we gotta do before we can get this cab off. Obviously the steering's gotta come undone. Gotta disconnect it in there, but somebody's wanting the steering column, so I'll probably go ahead and just pull the whole column out. Probably go ahead and take the seat out. I'd like to get all this carpet out before I really start working in here, because I feel like that's where most of the varmints and stuff are hiding. There's a couple of them right there. And he looks real happy too. There's probably some neat stuff I'm gonna find in here too. I already see some cool stuff up on the dash. Might go get some wasper spray, take care of those guys. And then I'm gonna see about getting the seat out and then ripping the carpet out. So right there, I can see one of the mountain bolts for the seat. I'm sure if I slide it forward, I can find that other one back there. Them front two bolts came out real easy on both sides. I could even get a ratchet on them. And then it looks like the rear two, I've got the seat slid forward and tilted up. Looks like I can get an impact on them. So this thing's coming out like cake. And like I said, I bet you we'll find something kind of neat. Looks like there's all kinds of junk just sitting back here. So once we get this seat out, maybe we can dig through it a little bit and see what we got. These two on this side seem to be a little bit tighter, so I gotta break out the big guns. If there is anything in this thing, I'm about to wake it up. I will say, whoever put this carpet in, I gotta give them credit, they took the seat out, put the carpet in, then put the seat back over the carpet. So it looks like all the seat belts are still in it. See a big wrench over there. There's a crowbar here, screwdriver. I might go see if I can hunt up a pair of gloves and I'll see about digging out some of this. And then maybe we can rip that carpet out and get it out. I think I got everything cleaned out from behind the seat on the dash, anything cool I could really find in there. Got it all spread out on the seat and we'll go over it real quick, show y'all what I found. We got some multi-purpose lubricant. We got one windshield wiper that I think is new. Don't look like it's ever been used. Found this old John Deere truck. It's kind of cool. Of course the crowbar. 
some paperwork. I'm not sure what that is. I'll dig through it later. Found two of them. I don't know if that's truck stuff or farm stuff or just nothing, just junk. Got a little screwdriver, a 15 16th Chinese wrench, ink pen, business card, one of those little cup holders you stick in your window. Some old Garfield card. When's the last time you saw one of those darts? Found this really cool lock. It was up on the dash. This is probably the best find of the whole truck. Some groovy old aviator sunglasses. And you can bet I'm gonna spit shine them bad boys and be wearing those. Uh, I found a partial box of shotgun shells. I'm not sure what gauge, but I think there's a few left in there. A little mushroom dude. These are actually parts I took off the radio. Old flashlight, some starting fluid. Fram oil filter, so we ain't gotta worry about the engine. We know it's toast. Got the uh, Florida State uniform patch, old insulator, and then an old Tennessee license plate. Pretty cool, Bicentennial 97, and then a 07 license plate, which I think was maybe the last year he had this register. There's one on the back too, so I'm not sure. But overall, it was a pretty good haul for an old truck. new day y'all it's a little bit cool it's super foggy it's finally starting to lift up here but the first thing i want to try and get done is getting the carpet out of here that'll give me better access to see about where all the cabin mounts are and stuff i've also got to unhook the steering maybe a couple other little things and i'd really like to get this cab off the frame today Whoever put this in didn't do too bad of a job. I mean, it really looks like they halfway tried. The floors are gone, which I already knew that, just crawling up over there and looking at it. Same over there on the passenger side. Looks like there's some rust back up here in like the door jams. Back here where the seat goes and stuff, that looks pretty good, but that typically does look pretty good. Trans mount tunnel, it looks pretty good. I'll tell you what's kind of crazy. I'm surprised Ford used those Torx bolts for their seat belts. So I'm gonna have to run over to the shop and get my Torx set to get them out. This should be a cab mount. Over there should be one. Looks like the plastic rubber cover still on that one. All right, so before I do the cab mounts, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this steering column. Somebody's waiting on it. So I'll undo that little cover and there'll probably be a couple bolts under there. I think there's five bolts there. Normally, you'd have enough slip and your steering shaft down here, there's that little slip joint. And up here, it's just a U-joint. But it looks like this one's pushed in pretty far. So I don't think I have enough slip there to undo the shaft. So instead I'm gonna undo the column, pull all that back, and then I'll be able to undo that steering shaft. This little column bezel here, it's just got a little split piece in it and it just pulled right off. Luckily I got that off in one piece with no cracks. And then there's the other two bolts I was expecting. I ought to be able to undo them and hopefully this column will pull forward enough I can get that steering linkage undone. That wasn't too bad at all. It was them four bolts. Of course, I had to unhook the wiring, undid one of the steering shaft couplings, and the whole column pulled out really easy. This is probably the hardest part, maneuvering this little piece of linkage. I had to unhook it down there at like the Z-bar type thing. I got the column out, so now we can move on to body mount.
The rear cab mounts were no problem. They came right out. Of course, these ones up under here on both sides were just spinning. I ended up having to cut them and grind at them. I finally got those out. There's two more up here at your grill support that should be right down in there somewhere. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the grill, I think, cause it's in really good shape. I wanna mess it up. Probably go ahead and cut the bumper off too. It's really just got like this one little dimple. And then of course those brackets. I don't know if those are added or factory, but it's really a pretty straight bumper. A lot of times these are all been up on top from people jerking them around with chains. So I'll get the grill off and that bumper off. That should give me easy access to them core support mounts. And we'll be ready to lift this truck cab off. I ended up not having to pull the grill off. Once I took these little mud flap pieces out, I'd get up in there to those front body mounts. I tried putting the impact on it, it was just spinning. So I ended up not having to pull the grill. Turns out there's like some bolts back in behind here you gotta get to. That was gonna be a pain in the butt, so I skipped that. I've got my brake lines cut there. I've got my heater core hoses unhooked, radiator hoses unhooked, the wire to the starter's undone. There's a few more little wires here and there I'm gonna have to undo. And I've got all my cab mounts loose, so we should be real close to pulling this so I'm just gonna shoot straight with y'all. That got real sketchy real quick. The cab kind of come back on me. I pulled a bunch of cabs, I pulled a bunch of Jeep tubs. I don't know what happened, but I ended up cutting the camera so I could just focus. Cab's off though, sitting over there. I got the bed moved over there. Got easy access to the rest of this drivetrain stuff. So, drive shafts need to come off, exhaust, maybe a few other things, get everything unbolted. Probably take it all off in one assembly. Like I said, I want to keep that transfer case though. I'll pop it off, get the axles pulled, probably keep the springs with those. I've got a lot of interest in this frame. For some reason, I don't know what. But I need to go ahead and get it stripped this weekend so I can get it up for sale. If it was easy, everybody would do it, but we're moving right along. I already told y'all I want to keep this 205 and I think the easiest way to get it off here is going to be just to pull the whole drivetrain together because it's kind of this cast iron piece, this adapter, it's kind of tied in with the trans mount there. So I think the easiest thing to do, I'm just going to pull this whole drivetrain in one go and then I'll separate this bad boy off afterwards. Well, that had to be the easiest engine I've ever pulled hands down. That joker came right out. There was like two motor mount bolts. I think there was a trans mount couple there. And then the one on the transfer case just lifted right out. I've actually got it up in the barn. It's already broke down. I've got engine transmission transfer case pulled apart. I've had a lot of interest in it. So I just went ahead and separated them out. We're moving right along though. So all that's left, got the axles, steering box, maybe the motor mounts, have this thing down to a frame and this job will be done.
I've got a really common problem here. I'm trying to drive this bolt out. It's just fused to the bush inside here, the spring eye bushing. And if you ever put like a lift kit on an old vehicle like this, you know these are just a pain in the butt. You gotta heat it up, smack on it, beat on it. Sometimes you gotta cut it off and press the whole bushing out. I don't feel like fooling with it. So I decided I'll take these out, just take this whole spring hanger bracket out. I gotta give it to Ford. This is pretty cool. So this one was spinning and it's got a real thin bolt head on the back of it. I was like, well, that's stupid, you know? And it's a 13 16 which is kind of weird. But if you look, it's supposed to be a stud and all the rest of them, both sides, the stud was in there. This one must have just rusted or stripped out. That's pretty slick. You know, a lot of times studs are just a round head and they strip out like this one did and then you, it takes forever to get them off. But that was a pretty good little trick Ford did there. So I've got all the nuts off these, so I'll knock these studs in and then this whole front part should just fall down. And then I might just end up cutting the shackles back there. I might not even fool with trying to get those off. So the camera cut out for no reason, but I got both sides, the shackles are cut. And something I forgot about is these sway bar links. I'm gonna try and save them. I don't know if I'll use them or not, but I'll go ahead and keep them anyways, just in case. Well, y'all, I think that's about it. I got this whole truck parted out, stripped down to the frame. I've got all the parts I need. I've got everything I'm gonna sell, set aside, ready to go. Now, parting a truck out like this is a big job. I've got a lot of time in it, a lot of work, but I believe by the time I get done selling off everything, I'll pretty much break even on my front axle. And this truck is going on to help other people with their Jeeps or Ford trucks or Scouts. So this is one less vehicle that's gonna end up in the crusher. I've said in the past, I would never part out a restorable vehicle. If this truck had been in good shape, I would have passed it on to the next guy. I would have found me a different truck. But this way, these parts go on to help other people with their restoration projects. And I get the axle I need. Well, y'all, it's about 200 degrees out here. The sun's so bright. I don't think my sunglasses are working anymore. But I sure appreciate y'all checking out the video. I'm really excited about these plans for the Scout. I can't wait to get started on it. Like I said, I'm gonna finish up the 3B, then we'll jump right into this Scout. Appreciate y'all checking out the video. If you see anything here that you would be interested in, 7barsalvage at gmail.com. I appreciate it, I'll see y'all next time.